Uh, today's lab is Williamson ether synthesis, making ether compound from alcohol and alkyl halide. And especially today, we're converting acet aminophene, which is the ingredient of Tylenol, to an acetic. So we replaced OH hydroxy group on benzene ring of acet aminophene to ethoxy groups. Okay, first, now button flask. Next. Okay. I always mention when you transfer the chemicals into the lava button flask, don't do it over the heating mantle because if you spill it, heating mantle, when it's heated, all the chemicals is melted, burning, or vaporized. So it's not good for health. So always add chemicals away from the heating method. Uh, first, we will add 1.3 gram of acet aminophene, which is also called 4-acet aminophene. Okay, aminophene. Okay, make zero with the filter papers. And uh, we add 1.3 grams of acet amino. Okay. Just again, put the bottle on top of the paper. So when you spill it, uh, it's not going into the floor, but go fall into onto the white paper. So you don't lose anything and you don't mess up. Okay, one point three grams. Okay, and make the bit, uh, make the wing papers like the cone shape, and add into the flask. Okay, completely transfer. Okay, then using another bit of papers. Like zero. And now we add potassium carbonate. Okay, can you see it? Potassium carbonate, which is strong base. So potassium carbonate deprotonate hydroxy group on benzene. Benzene. So give the more nuclear feeling. So add 2.5 grams. Good. Okay, make a cone shape. Transfer into the flask. So without spilling, you can transfer all those two solids. Of course, don't forget to add boiling chips for homogeneous boiling. So maybe you need the two or three pieces. And today's solvent is uh, MEK, which is called methyl ethyl ketone, which is similar to acetone. So add methyl ethyl ketone. Okay. Well, two butane. There's one more carbon than acetone.
uh, when you add the chemicals, reactant should be correct amount. But the solvent, a little bit more, a little bit less, it doesn't affect much. So you don't need to spend time to get exactly 15. This is about, how much it is? Uh, yeah, about 17. So maybe I left a little bit. Okay, so at about 15 milliliter of MEK or 2 butanol. Then, at the iodide. We need uh, one milliliter of ethyl iodide. So everything is set. Now we have to set up reflux. So we have to reflux for one hour. Now get your mantle. Secure the position of the long water flask. So you have to touch the top plate. And height, so it's not moving. Condenser, don't forget to greasing. So, greasing is three different places, even here. Don't add too much grease because it becomes uh, sticky and it's not good. Okay, it in and uh, spinning so the grease is spreading and it's secure. And this second clamp may be not needed, but to ensure. It's not falling down. You just put it around the condensers, but don't make it tight. Okay? okay so there's some flexibility. And then connect water. So water going in from lower place here. And water will be out from higher position. So condenser will be full of water. Okay? and gently turn on the water okay water level is moving up okay that's fine and check what is out okay can you hear that okay water doesn't need to be a lot just water flowing to replenish the cold water inside the condenser that's the objective so don't need to a lot of water okay now it's a set so Turn it on, maybe set to 7, 70%, and we will reflux one hour. Uh, one hour start, not from this moment. One hour start when the solution is boiling. So we have to boiling it for one hour, okay? And here there's one question. Why are we using 2-butanol, MEK, instead of acetone, 2-propanol? Uh, because acetone is much cheaper, it's m very easily available. Every chemistry lab has acetone. But why are we using more expensive 2-butanol for this reaction? Because MEK, acetone, so one carbon difference, so there's not much difference. Both are not reactive, but why are we using MEK instead of acetone? We have a lot of acetone. Uh, the reason is, when you do the reflux, the solution temperature, which means the reaction temperature, is the boiling point of the solvent used. So, if we, like today, we're using the MEK as a solvent, when it's boiling it, solution temperature is about 80 degrees Celsius, which is the boiling point of MEK. But if we were using the acetone, the boiling point of acetone is about 56 degrees Celsius, so which is about 25 degrees lower. So reaction temperature is about 56, which is lower than the MEK. But its common fact is whenever you increase the reaction temperature by 10 degrees Celsius, reaction is two or three times faster. So since their boiling point difference is about 25, let's say it's 20, so two to three times, and then another two to three times because there are 20 degrees Celsius boiling point difference. So minimum four times and maximum nine times faster if we using MEK instead of acetone. So today we're for one hour 
So if you're using the acetone, we have to reflux at least four hours, four hours, or nine hours. So organic lab usually four hours time. So when you set up, and uh, when the reflux is done, you have to leave. Okay, so we have to use a lot of electric. So to save the time and keep the more effective, we're using MEK instead of acetone. So we need just one hour reflux instead of four to nine hours of reflux. That's why we're using the MEK. Okay, so we're just waiting until it's boiling. And when it starts boiling, uh, reflux up and down is going up. Okay, why this is called reflux? Uh, maybe you did reflux already. So when the solution is heating, the solvent is vaporized. So they're moving up, but because of the cold water outside the condensers, they're condensed and falling down. And then vaporized, moving up, condensed, liquidified, fall down into the flask. So it's moving, solvent is moving up and down, up and down. So we call this is reflux. The, and also the reason we do favor the reflux is you can control the reaction temperatures because reaction temperature will be the boiling point of your solvent used. So if you need a higher temperature for reactions, maybe you can pick up the solvent which is has a higher boiling point. If you want a lower temperature, you can pick up the solvent which has lower boiling point. Okay, so you can control. And another reason is it's open. Okay, nothing is there, so it's open. But all the liquid is condensed around these areas. So you don't losing any liquid, especially the solvent. So a small amount of solvent can be used the whole reaction time. So that's another reason. And another third reason is if one of your product is a gas, it's not the product, side product is a gas. So you don't need it, but it's produced. Then the gas can be escaped. Can, gas cannot be condensed with the cold water. So one of your product is removed from the system which means the reaction moving to product size. Okay. So reaction getting faster and faster because the Chatelier's principles, if you remove the product, reaction going more to the product. Okay. So that's another benefit the reflux is used. Okay. Okay, start the boiling and the current time is eleven twenty-five. So we do reflux for one hour. So, wait for one hour. Okay, it's been one hour of the reflux. All is fine. Uh, so, we cool it up. So, but keep the water on. Don't turn off the water. Water is the last one you have to turn off. Okay, first, stop the heating. Uh, if the heating method is here, it's uh, cooling maybe takes a longer time because heating method is hot. So to make it faster, we're removing heating source. So by lowering the jack, take it out. And remove the heating methods. Okay. And we wait it. At least until the, the boiling is stopped because when the boiling is there, still is boiling, when you take off the condensers, the solvent vapor is coming out. Okay, so two butanol maybe not that toxic, but in general it's better to have a habit because when you're working with the hazardous materials, if you don't have a habit, you make a mistake. So always follow the correct route, correct method, process. Okay, so just waiting until it's cooled down, water keep on, what is last one? You have to turn off. Okay, wait until it's cooled down. Okay, it's completely cooled, so we have to grab the filtration to remove this solid, which is potassium iodide and potassium bicarbonate, which is protonated, and unreacted potassium carbonate because okay, we're using 2.5 okay it's cold enough so yeah drop the water remove the condenser Oops.
Okay, for graphic filtration, we need a bigger size of filter papers. Uh, there are two ways to make a piece of paper. Simple way is folding half and folding another half. So it's 90 degrees cone. Okay, and then open it like a copy filter papers. But this is usually small, so you want a bigger size. Okay. Depending on the funnels, you need a bigger size. When you need a bigger size, all you have to do is just can you see it? Yeah. extend, okay. extend this, okay, a little bit, so make it bigger. Okay. Or if you want it bigger, it's open more. But we don't need this big. Okay, so you can control the size using this. Okay. It looks like this is proper size. Okay. Like so. The other way is the uh, fluted with the paper. So this is a little bit different. Half and half, but folding inside one. Okay. So you see the plus sign there. Okay. And then folding it. Push inside. Make like a like a propeller. Okay. Nice. Like this. Okay. Can do it again. And each of four sides for you push. Push. This is easier. Okay. Push. Like a half size. Okay, half size. And opposite side too. So I see the two different sides. Okay. And the other two sides. This side is short. Okay. And the last part. So now all four sides is smaller. Now it's open it. Like a blue tip. Yes. It's like a coffee filter papers. Okay, but now this one the problem is when you add the solution, it's open it wide. So that's one disadvantage. But it gives the wider areas the filtration. Okay. So we have a two, two different ways. But we're using the first one. Okay. okay. okay swallowing it. This is not gentle and thick. It's just gentle. Because only this is not our product. Our product is dissolved in MEK, solvents. So, but at the beginning, go slow because paper will be wet. And the rinse the solid with two times five milliliter of ethyl acetate. Uh, the manual said methylene chloride, but ethyl acetate is better. So this is 10 milliliters. So we add about half. Okay. Completely transfer our product, which is in solution by linsing the solids. Okay. 
the older soul it is built up of and uh, when it's done add the remaining five mil of the ethyl acetate so, so at this point we are assuming all our product which is panacetate is moved into separatory funnels This beaker is for the waste, which is the later is the aqueous layer. Okay, a small amount remaining there. Before using the separate funnels, maybe adding water and make sure it's not leaking. Okay? Because if it leaks during the process, you're losing your product. So also it's closed. Okay. This is closed. So if you turn 90 degrees, it becomes open. So this blue one is the direction of the hole inside the stopper. Okay, so it's closed. Open. Open, closed. Okay, this is done. So move to the side. One minute. Okay, now the solution containing your product and maybe unreacted acetyl amino and maybe some ethyl iodide and of course the solvent MEK. So we have to remove unreacted uh, acetyl amino, which is weak acid because of the phenol groups. So by adding this 5% sodium hydroxide, about 20 milliliters. So by adding this, this aqueous layer separate from organic layers and unreacted acet aminopin will be deprotonated and become a salt in oxide. And they move into aqueous layer. So this acet aminopin become a salt by reacting with sodium hydroxide and separate from organic layer. They move into water layer. Okay. Add it. See there are two layers. Okay. Of course the bottom is aqueous layer. And the tip, okay, holding it all tight. And upside down, release the heat first. Okay. And tip should not pointing to any person in the lab. Okay, so to the empty space and close it, shake it up and down, release the heat, up and down, release the heat. And uh, we don't shake the funnel like a left right this direction. If you do this, most probably this neck area will be broken because this is weak and many cases they make a bubble inside. So like a balloon, if you're sitting on the balloon, it's pop up. But Bubble inside cannot pop up because it's surrounded by glass. So when the pressure is increased, instead the bubble is pop up, actually they breaking the neck, which is the weakest part of separate body. So don't shake it horizontally, left and right. It's always up and down. Okay, but Since we want the uh, X-base reaction here, so reaction with the sodium hydroxide and acetyl amino feed, we need a good shaking. So all of the unreacted acetyl amino feed become a salt and they move into aqueous layer. So separate from organic okay, layer. <coughs> Maybe enough. Put it back. And we open the stopper. <coughs> and wait until layer is separate. So you can see it. Okay, so now it's separating. The bottom part is aqueous layer because density of the water is one. And the top portion crowded area is organic layer. 
ethyl acetate and MEK because their density is less than one. So any salt if there is move into aqueous layer, especially the unreacted acid amino piece. They become a salt by reacting with the sodium hydroxide. They stay in aqueous layer. Top layer, this is our product. Maybe unreacted ethyl iodide and MEK. And of course, ethyl acetate, the solvent we rinsed, also there. But all of them are volatile liquids. Back separated. So, and the bottom layer, which is aqueous layer, is not our interest because our product is on the top layer. So we drain. When you drain, the tip of the separated funnel should be inside the container. Sometimes the solution is splashed. And the borderline getting closer to the bottom, slowing down and close it. Okay. So now we have only top layers. Now this top layer containing some of the sodium hydroxide. So to remove it, we just add <coughs> about 10 ml of diesel water to rinse out sodium hydroxide. Just rinse and shake just gently because if you shake it too much, it makes an emergence which is e not easy to separate. Again, up and down shaking, not the left and right. And wait. Sometimes the two layers is not clearly separated because of emergence. And one of the tip is just adding organic solvent. Now the two layers is separated, so we just discard the bottom layer, which is, uh, of course, aqueous layer. So keep the top layer. Looks crowded, crowded because it's wet with the uh, water. So whenever the organic layer touched by aqueous layer, small amount of the water is mixed with organic layer. So it becomes crowded. So it's wet. So we have to remove the water uh, from the organic layer. So transfer this into empty flask. role of drying agent? You have to dry. What's the meaning of dry? Removing water. So we add sodium sulfate into this organic layer. So how much? Uh, let's see. Okay. okay. How do you know? So you have enough amount of the drying agent. First, I don't know if you can see it, but the, actually the sodium sulfate is like a small crystal, like a sugar. But once they grab the water, it becomes like a big chunk. So if you don't see any small crystals like a sugar, 
That means all of the sodium sulfate grab the water. And at that point, we don't know. Water is completely removed, or still there is water. But at that point, all of the sodium sulfate used to grab the water. So we have to add some more. Okay. Now there's a big chunk and also small crystals, like the sugar one. So which means there are water-free sodium sulfate there. Okay. And also second evidence that the drain agent is added enough, its solution becomes clear. It was crowded, now it's clear. Okay. So we had enough sodium sulfate, just enough. But if you add too much, that's not good because the solid so takes some solution. So you're losing your product. Okay. So leave it for like one or two minutes. That's good enough time to grab all the water by sodium sulfate. And then we decant into a beaker. Okay. Okay. Decant. Gently transfer. Just liquid, not the solid. And if you want, there's still some liquid remaining, so using the pipette, you can take it out. No solid, just liquid. Now this solution, which is organic layer, containing your product, veracity, ethyl iodine, which is volatile, MEK, which is also volatile, is 80 degrees Celsius boiling point, and ethyl acetate, which is a low boiling point too. So if you remove the solvent, you can get just crude solid, which is uh, veracity. So to remove the solvent, maybe you can do the distillation, but easier one is put this solution in the hot water bath. So hot water, which is 100 degrees Celsius, removing, vaporizing the solvent. And then only the solid is made. And since the solvent is vaporized, we cannot do this inside the lab, but we have to do inside the food, which is behind. OK, the, all the solvent is removed, only the crude product of paracetine remaining. So this is not clean yet. So we have to purify this by recrystallizing in water. Okay, so we using the hot water, we dissolving all these solids, and then slowly cooling down to crystallize the product. And since the solvent is water, we can heat directly on hot plate. Okay, so we have already hot water there. Add about 10 to 15 milliliters of the water, hot water. And we're heating directly on half plate. Of course, we have to stir it. Just keep stir until it's boiling. Uh, still solid, it's not completely dissolved. Then we add more water. So recrystallization, you need a saturated solution at high temperature, which is usually boiling point of the solvent. So make a saturated solution at the boiling point and slowly cool down to room temperature. And then keep in ice bath, so the more solid will be crystallized. So it's not boiling yet, so we're just waiting. Okay, it's not boiling. Milliliter, maybe not enough. But about two, three more milliliters.
Okay, wait until all solid dissolved in hot water. All dissolved, so we cool it to room temperature first. So we're moving this hot solution into the bench. So this is hot. You see? Okay. Okay. And wait until it becomes cool to room temperature. Okay, after cool it room temperature, and then we keep it ice bath. So we precipitate more crystals. Shiny crystal forms. So next, the final stage, we do the vacuum filtration. Okay, to the side and to the side of the water tap, and secure the flask. Okay, and turn on the water all the way to so give the higher vacuum. Put the proper size of the filter paper. And water paper. Just add a little bit of water. It's wet. Okay. And there are some solid stuff. So let Okay. Before vacuum filtration, you have to swallowing it. Gentle and quick transfer. Okay, almost nothing in there. Okay, so I took nothing. Nothing, good. Okay, now the lesson is. The final two products with ice cold water. Why are you using ice ice cold water? Because the after the penacetin is not soluble in water, but small amount can be dissolved if you're using the normal temperature water. So using the ice cold water, we minimize the losing of the product in the rinse process. Okay. In the bench. Okay, when it's done, don't turn off the water. To break the vacuum first and turn off. Okay. Make sure there's no water. Okay, first tapping. A lot of solid comes, but not the paper. So scratch outside the paper with a spatula. So there's no solid inside. Okay. And then scratch the filter paper to transfer all the products on filter paper onto wet papers. Okay. And let's see how much product we have here. Thank 
computer with the paper. Start 1.03 grams of acetaminophen and finishing with 1.04 gram of paracetamol. Okay. Now we have to clean up the batch. Bye everyone.